How are you? Oh, I am terrible. Yeah. And there we go. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to Hanging with Humans, episode nine. Nine? Today, I have a wonderful, wonderful guest. He's a dear, dear friend of mine, a former roommate, former breakup bro, um, the legend, the man himself, Nick Thomas. Um, Nick, what is that nickname they call you around here? Nicky T. Nicky T. How'd you get that nickname? <laughs> Well, my name is Nick Thomas, so I just put a Y on the end of Nick and oh, that's cut, true. Cut the Thomas I should have out. came in before that question with like way deeper. Like, I know, and to be I really got honest with you, I T bone people when I drive and crash into them. Like, I don't know, it's all something like that. No, actually, I I think I gave it to myself, to be honest, which is which is super like super cool. That is, I mean, I self RGZ all my nicknames too. Dude. It's all the same thing, but. Um, I, uh, we're going to start here with, uh, I'm going to let, we're going to get to know you a little bit. Um, cause you're my friend and I love you. What's some cheese? It's from the dollar store. Lakeview really? cheese. Yes. Yeah, the snack size. It's a large snack size. That's delicious. We've also got some, uh, peanut butter, uh, cheese crackers. Well, not as good as Austin. Don't buy the munchy Frito-Lay brand. They're, but, they're trash. But this here, what are we doing here? What's going on? Oh, that's here? a Bill Maher beef stick, little buddy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I figured if I was going to have you as a guest in the liquor hole. Then only the finest meats come out. P.S. This is my bar in my basement, the liquor hole. This is the liquor hole. I, I actually love what you've done with this. This is very dope. It's very, like, Are trashy, you... right? <laughs> <laughs> are you going to the dollar bills, like, all over? Like I think bar? so, eventually. But right now, people are just kind of tucking them in places that they go. I love that. Uh, all the stuff you got going on here, kind of uh, retro vibes. Where are you getting all this stuff from? Honestly, most of it was given to me. That TV... I bought when I moved out <clears throat> when we first started hanging out. Mm -hmm. um, the t uh, bar tops that you can't see in film right now are all from Chili's. Chili. The chairs we had, I bought those two chairs. I bought the chairs we're sitting at at the restore. This table was given to me from Kyla True Smith. Oh, it's Smith now. That's right. Um, these signs were all given to me, except for those. I bought those two over there. I love, I, I love it. And I also like that you got it. Um, your the license plate says Nick's Truck. Yeah. Okay. Uh, very cool. It was my truck. Very original. Uh, um, all right. So uh, a little bit of what we do here as we, me, what I do here on this podcast is talk about mental health. But you and me have had a ton of good, awesome times together. We've also shared some bummer times together. We have. Um, so we'll do a little story time and stuff. But the reason why I'm bringing up a certain story is because we were both suffering from gnarly breakups, super sad, super depressed, and we were just drinking ourselves silly. And um, into the abyss. Into the abyss is what I what we would refer to it to. I'm in the abyss, bro. Can't do it. It means like three, four day bender. Um, fast forward to now. Happily married as of recently. Well, just I broke my wedding ring, so I'm getting ideas. I'm still married. <laughs> you hear that, Slice. dudes? You hear that? Um, so you're all happily married now. Um, but you were not the man then that you are today. Um. We got into the gym together. That was a big thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I guess what I'm saying is my antidepressant is the gym. You know, it's that's my dopamine. That's like my drug. Um, can you kind of go about and explain where we were at that point right now when uh, we, we just got broken up with? What is what is the shit looking like? So do you care if I backtrack a little no, bit? Backtrack. Please, please, please. So before we got into the breakup, I was dating a gal, top-notch human being, um, and her roommate at the time and friend was dating RJ. So I was living in the house with this ex-girlfriend that neither here nor there, great human being. I just realistically, I didn't treat her the way she deserved to. And uh, now she's happily married and she deserves every bit of happiness because she's such a decent, great human. Um, but anyways, she was, or RJ was dating her roommate. So naturally we were both basically roommates then. Mm -hmm. You didn't officially live there, but you were there all the time. All the time. Correct. And we started doing, you know, family dinners, and we would just hang out and like watch a little bit. YouTube and mm -hmm. we'd sit on the patio and, and drink and eat. And then we get like dance parties and get a little bit into the abyss. Pair wear onesies. It was, oh. yeah, we had the onesies. Oh, onesies. Sky Vodka was your thing. Sky Vodka. Cooking with RJ. So anyways, once those breakups both happened, which 
ironically enough, was pretty close to the same time. Mm -hmm. I was sitting around and I was like, okay, I have nothing else going on. I worked somewhere that basically didn't give me a whole lot of extra cash. Not to mention I was really stupid and bought stuff I really shouldn't have, like vehicles I really couldn't afford. So I was really low on cash and I had no other things to do. Mm -hmm. So I basically talked to RG. He's like, yeah, I'm going to hit the gym. I was like, well, I've been talking about doing this my whole life. Like, let's go for it. And it became a thing. Like, we were religious about it. Yeah, good. Um, so up until that point when we did that, was going to the gym, was that not a, like a normal, uh, common part of your life? No, it's not. not until I, you, well, you remember having to teach me everything. Mm -hmm. I just, I didn't know like what your level of fitness or playing sports, like growing up. Was. I'm the most uncoordinated athletic person you've ever met RJ. I'm, I can't play backhanded. That's chill. That's chill. I'm so <laughs> uncoordinated. It's ridiculous. We played Cornell the other day, mm -hmm. and it was freaking embarrassing. That bad? <laughs> Just so uncoordinated. Oh, I have no hand-eye coordination. I love that. Um, I love that for you. I'm sorry. Um, but <laughs> it'll be okay. Um, so from there, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I've been smoking a lot of weed lately. <laughs> so me. here we are in the middle of the story. My bad. That's you. No, I'm not. That was it. Yeah. I was just going to say, as I get these snacks out, and we have these microphones right here mic'd up, like, it's all the wrong. That's right. That's we're just I literally, in like a, a couple episodes before, I ate like sour gushers throughout like the whole thing, and I was like, oh, I really wish I didn't do that. So, yeah, now, now, well, you did this. Why would you do this? Uh, I don't know. I thought we ha should have, like, if you're going to be down in the liquor hole, I thought you should have. Yeah. And I don't have that. Um, so, no, but I do have a Capri Sun. This is my NA beer right here. Um, so at that point right there, we're going to the gym. What year is that? Do you remember? 2016. And it's 2023 right now? Mm -hmm. That's, I'm not doing math right now. Seven years ago. It's a lot of years. So you've been, as long as I've known you, like since then, I would say you've taken breaks and stuff. You've been pretty consistent overall. Uh, yeah, I haven't really taken that many of breaks though. I always have to go. And I go because I don't want to. Mm. But I hate the gym. I've never enjoyed the gym. I go because I don't want to be fat. It's a discipline. <laughs> Joke's on me. I'm 35 now and I'm still fat. Dude, so <laughs> You're stacked and I don't want to hear a thing. Um, <laughs> in the gut. In anyway, the gut. You and Chantel, you guys go to the gym and stuff together too sometimes? I'm trying to get her into the getting in there too. Yeah. I, I, She's... Not huge on it, but we're getting her in there. She's got great form. I was watching her squat and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm squat. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. Um, so, yeah, that's how we met, right? We met from that relationship. We were all effed up. We broke through that barrier uh, by bettering ourselves with the gym. Uh, fast forward later, our lives are way, way different. You're getting married now. Or you're married now. Um, Costa de la Smurf. We oh, we're fast, we're fast forwarding again. Yeah. Like we're way fast forwarding. Are we? Really? Oh, okay. Well, we're going from 2016 all the way into 2021. That's true. Um, we Which is fine. We can do that. This is your show. Yeah. So check out these notes. You can't read them? No. Like, because it's... Your I can't even read them. Right. Like I'm dyslexic <laughs> probably. So this is like my order. I go like... Uh, eh, huh? Yeah. Uh, um, okay. But going off of that... I'm just like, I just throw questions here and there. We just kind of go, Good. um, relationship to the person you are now today in this relationship with your now wife mm -hmm. person, you were maybe that time frame uh, of our lives. What are the big uh, changes you've made to be able to be in a successful relationship and now uh, marriage? So, uh, I don't know how many people are watching this going to know me at all, but I'm a bit of an egomaniac. Um, I don't mean to be, I don't mean to, but. I, like I, I definitely, I think I know my worth. Mm -hmm. Um, I try to be the best person I can. I try not to be a POS to certain people, but I've definitely done that before. If you say you don't ever mm -hmm. think you're a liar. Yeah. Um, when I was living with you, I just left my mother's house because prior to leaving my mom's house three months before that, I was in another relationship and I packed my stuff up one night and left. <clears throat> Said I was done and Moved in with my mom in my mom's basement in my old room from high school. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, I can't live with my mom. He's 32 years old. I cannot <laughs> live with my mom. And uh, I, uh, RJ's like, I got a room coming up. And I was like, well, it's really not what I want to do because I'm not big on renting or with roommates, our roommates just because general, yeah, right? I'm just not big on it. I've seen it go south so many times with other people. And but I was also looking at the market in town here, and I was like, there's just no, I just don't see it. I mean, maybe down the road we'll find something that works. But right now, 
This is going to be affordable. Mm -hmm. This gets me out of my mother's house. It gets me living a little more independent. Gives me a better chance to whore around if we're going to be real honest with each other. And um, that year we moved in and uh, we had a pretty good setup for roommates, to be honest. We didn't see each other that much, though. I think that's one of the keys to being good roommates, too. Like a lot of people don't know that, but that Mm. space and we're not super alike in like all the exact same things. So we're not like if you're going somewhere, oh, hey, can I go? Or, hey, you know, it's like we just some like sometimes like, what do you do? He's like, say, can I take a line? Like, of course you can take a line. Let's go. Dinner at home all the time. No, sometimes we didn't do a lot of it. I think a lot of it, you were going through another breakup at the time, too. That I was. So you were kind of doing your thing. Yeah. And I was, you know, doing my thing as well. So we, I was about the best way to describe when we lived together is we kind of did our own things. There was days that we would though, we'd be at home and, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, you'd be cooking supper, or, you know, we'd just be literally hanging out doing nothing. Um, that was, it was a good time. It was a good period. Um, that time we're going to go into a funny ass story because, uh, St. Patty's day. Oh, so, and we lived together, right? The, I got the, this is the best roommate story ever. Um, he will tell it better, but basically, he got shit faced in Butte, right? Well, we started in Butte, drove back from Butte, and then continued to go in hell. And I had to work the next day. I don't know what the hell I was. Before thinking. we go into that, can you explain what Butte, uh, what St. Patty's Day on Butte is like? Um, St. Patty's Day in Butte, like so, everybody or the main group of folks out of Butte are all Irish Catholic. So, um, Butte was founded on mines, so they're all old blue collar. Irish folks and he, he, St. Patty's Day has always been a big deal in Butte, so they do a huge parade in the morning, and that basically just <clears throat> pickle their livers all night. Yeah, it's a good time. It's a really good. That's time. crazy. It's like a, <laughs> like any other festival that closes off roads and streets, but there's thousands of people in Uptown Butte, and Butte's population cannot be more than like twenty thousand people on a normal day. Yeah, right. No. Yeah, but um. So yeah, he was turned up. From there, so anybody will go into that sort of parade situation thing. It's just a really good time there in Butte. But uh, continue, sir. So we get home. I'm like, you know, I start you're drinking more, and we're doing car bombs. Rule number one: stop doing car bombs. I did one last year. That's the only one I did. But then we go, you know, we come back and hit one bar in town. I go eat with my old man and drink while I'm eating there. And then instead of going home like a smart kid, because I go out to Lakeside, which is another bar out, believe it or not, right next to the Lake, and. Uh, we're doing more car bombs there. Just got inebriated and then came home and like went to bed. Well, sometime in the middle of sleep, and this is the only time I've ever done this in my whole life. I, I puke in bed. They got like laid out. <clears throat> Anyways, I wake up thinking like I was just sleeping a normal night. And I look over and I'm pretty sure RJ's dog Winston is sleeping in the bed with me. And I'm going to wake up. Winston, you puked in my bed. What the hell, man? And I'm pretty sure the poor, I whooped the poor dog's butt too. I'm pretty sure for it. Yeah. And I must have been loud because RJ comes in the room. He's like, what's going on, man? I was like, freaking Winston puked all over my bed. And instead of just being like, no, idiot, it was fucking you. This is like a nice shirt. It was Winston. Sure. Was. Who else would it be? Oh. God, so I, you know, get out of bed, call a bunch of people, I guess, on the phone, lose a bunch of stuff. And. I'm going to do my laundry, obviously, because my bet my sheets are covered in fucking puke. Yeah. And I go do my laundry, and I go clear them up the next day, and I can see, like, carrot in there. I'm like, oh, I know. It was me. I didn't know until, like, the next day. I was, in my mind, convinced it was Winston. And it wasn't until the next day that I was like, oh, I'm like, fucked up. Put two and two together. Oh, man. I felt just, oh, man. I forgot. I missed work the next day for an hour. I walked right in. They're like, turn around. You can come back tomorrow, maybe. Fucking my boss wouldn't answer my calls all day. Just had the, the anxiety was real. There's yeah, there's lesson no, learned though. The day after St. Patty's Day, like I don't think there's a company in the world that's like, oh yeah, you're fucking sick, oh huh? like <laughs> not from booze. Um yeah, so since we're just jumping around backtracking and whatnot, um, so I met you around the time that I met you that we talked about, I want to say like 2016, 17 or something. That's um, really cheese, right? This is actually really good. For dollar store cheese. And the little peppers are kind of yeah, they're fire, really right? Good. Um you, uh, I never, I, uh, you only, I was only friends with you briefly while you were in the radio business, mm-hmm. right? So I want to, um, I kind of want to know like how you got into that. How did you fall into that? And, um, what were your experiences like doing that? Cause I seen you would like go to concerts and talk to all these rad, you know, singers and stuff, country singers. Uh, yeah, the radio was cool. The radio was awesome. Yeah. Um, I love my job now, but the radio is still my favorite job I ever had. Doesn't pay for shit though. If you're really, yeah, it's it was not it was not a real good 
you, paying job. You would think if somebody like the face of something. Yeah, you, I mean, but it's I just that's what it is. And plus, radios phasing out. Do you have a mullet at the time? I've had a mullet since like 2006 or 13, I think. That's right. It started here in Montana. And uh, possibly. Yeah, so I uh, I know a guy that works for the radio. Um, he drinks at my my original hometown bar, my home home based bar. And I remember telling him one night down there, it's like, you know, I'd love to get in. He's like, well, I can get you in to do some, basically the worst work there is there. He's like, I can get you in doing some of this because no one else wants to do it. So I'm sure they were happy to hire me for next to nothing. I was only doing it to get my foot in the door. Mm-hmm. So, and just as, you know, just as it would have it, the co-host for the morning show ended up leaving and going somewhere else. And the guy that it. was doing the co-hosting with her, his name is Brother Dale, who became one of my dear friends and still is. I just, I don't talk to him as much anymore. Shout um, out to Brother Dale. Yeah, sh- shout out to Bro Dale. Yep. And uh, he basically gave me a chance and God, we had fun on the morning show. We would just, we would do ridiculous stuff. He was so good at like coming up with the ridiculous things to do. So we'd plan the show out the day before. He'd be like, well, tomorrow's Dale Earnhardt's, Ju- or Dale Earnhardt's birthday. So why don't we race chairs down Broadway? And if you've been in hell on a Broadway, it's like steep. Like steep, steep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we get on our desk chairs and meet him race down Broadway awesome. for whatever it was. And yeah. During Christmas time, I was like, man, I wish someone would make us some baked goods. I'm like, why don't we have a contest if who's got the best baked goods in town? And we went and talked to, they just closed down, it's called the Panhandler. And we got like 90 bucks worth of gift certificates, like 30 bucks a piece for basically high-end kitchen stuff. So yeah, yeah. someone went, so they, they came and brought us like all sorts of fudge and peanut brittle. That was the that was the categories: fudge, peanut brittle, and then other homemade stuff. Yes, or? all homemade oh, stuff that people brought in. That's so dope. Yeah. So he just thought that all up, all up to throw. I was just wanting to be fat and eat really good Christmas <laughs> stuff. So we had the great Christmas plate debate. Damn, that's awesome. Uh, um, we would do just like VCR day. We destroyed a VCR. I went and did a burnout on it in my truck. And I, my mom came and brought it in for Gary Allen tickets and <laughs> Gary Allen. Did um, nice, nice. And I went. To, I got to see a bunch of bunch of stars. Uh, yeah, it's... Randy Hauser, Dirk Bentley, Frankie Ballard, Garth Brooks, um, <laughs> Keith Urban. Uh, Billy Currington, Trace Atkins, I mean, a whole bunch of these stars. I got to go and meet them, and most, like, most of them were nice enough. A few of them were really cool. Yeah, Tim and Faith were awesome. Yeah, um, some of them weren't. Billy Currington, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go watch him ever again. No. He was a t- <laughs> really, yeah, he was a douche. That's douche just didn't. I was hammered when I met Tyler Farr, and you can see in this picture with him. He, I'm turning on my phone. Show me, he's like, man, come on. You see, the look on his face, he's like. Please get out of my fucking face. On, like, please Come leave. That's, please leave. <laughs> dang. I mean, dude, can you imagine on that level, though, that scale, how many people you're just dealing with in and out all day long? I get worn out from, like, a little social event. I can imagine right. a huge concert. Well, it's, like, part of your life, though. It is. You got to you gotta roll with it. Um, So you uh, he, you guys are doing a bunch of skits and everything like that. Is it, like, an Opie and Anthony type thing? You know, nope. Opie and Anthony, they're radio guys. Never mind. Um, So... You do that. How does uh, how does that end? Was that something? So you chose? the company that I worked for um, got bought out by another company that has a company currently still here in town, mm-hmm. and they bought them out. I think I was a little edgy for them, and I don't think I was worried about what I'd say on the air as much as they were worried about what I would do off the air. Mm-hmm. A bit of a loose cannon. Loose cannon. Uh, and, uh, wild card. They what weren't. They weren't a real big fan of it. And I said uh-huh. a few things. I'm pretty sure. Put my uh, nail in the grave on a couple things, which happens. Hey, dude. Free speech. That's what I'm all about. Um, so with that, during the radio stuff, when did you start your uh, your social media sort of presence thing? Was that around the same time? Because uh, no, I started doing social media stuff in 2014. Um, me and Tinker, believe it or not, decided we were going to do the company that ended up firing me had a contest mm-hmm. when, uh, when Helena first started getting concerts because mm-hmm. we had none. We had Montgomery Gentry came to play here and they're like, we have meet and greets and a special seat for whoever is the biggest fan who can show us you're the biggest fan of the mighty most. So we put these shirts on and got Quaid make us some signs and some other stuff like that. And we ended up winning. And then the next year, Trey Atkins came. And uh, we decided to do a video to his song, Rough and Ready. Because you had to lip sync or sing one of his songs oh, and be better. Yeah. So me and Tinker 
do rough and ready and get in the middle of the hills and cut off shorts like a bunch of dang idiots and did this music video. And that was the one thing that Tinker was always down and badass for was he was always willing to be like, I'm in. Like I was like, hey, I have this stupid, crazy idea for a video. We're going to look like idiots, but I think it's going to be funny. He's like, say when. You like need, he was always into that. You need that. And, and we won that. Goodness. And then basically once I was doing that, I was like, what do people think about me just doing – uh, like a like a daily blog online and just post a video, and it was, you know, it turned into like a thousand likes in a day, and then it was ten thousand likes in a couple of weeks or something like that. I don't remember. It's almost ten years ago, and now it's, um, it's like I get recognized everywhere I go. Yeah, like like Vegas, Oklahoma, really um, Vegas, Oklahoma, and like. I don't know if anybody recognized me in Florida, Texas, wherever we go. You'll want people to recognize it. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. Um. That's where everyone eats people's faces off with bath salts. Uh, it's been a long time, hasn't it? Hasn't bath salts been a hot minute? Yeah, we're off the salts now. Um, yeah, so you're doing that radio. Uh, so do you remember the first video that like blew up, blew up? Bro? I do. What is that? It was Moose Power. Moose Power. What happened to Moose Power? So back in the day, people don't do it as much anymore. There's a few people that do. But uh, so it's the guys with Dodge pickups and they... Uh, Tooted. Sorry. Um, That's all right. The guys with Dodge pickups. Things. The Dodge pickup mirrors flip up. Yes. Okay. And I remember a buddy of mine telling me one time, uh, me and that gal I used to date had a big Dodge pickup. I think her husband drives it now, which means it's still running, which is crazy. But she used to run those mirrors up all the time. <clears throat> so we're going up to have her to go see some friends. And my buddy's like, you got that moose power coming? I'm like, what in the hell does that mean? <laughs> it means he's like, the Dodge tow mirrors looks like a moose running down the road. And I was like, oh my God. So... Lo and behold, I got the mirrors pulled up, pulling a trailer, because we're not ghost trailering it. We can have mirrors up. This is the big thing. Anyways, I make this video, just driving up on the high line, up yeah. towards Cutbank for a car show. And I'm, like, basically doing this video, and for some reason, like, it took off. Damn. People are like, oh, this guy's making fun of Dodge truck owners. And then that was my big thing for a while, is this diesel truck making fun of all the diesel douche guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then as I've gotten older, I just don't do a lot of them anymore. I did one today. I had a wild hair to have one today, and I haven't done one since June before that. So On vehicles or something? No, no. I did one on a getting old oh. and fat. <laughs> no, dude. Honestly, every now and then when I pop in and check, you always have like a point to what you're saying. There's always like some sort of I try, and I believe I'm a semi-shadow band because I will say whatever the hell I want to, and I'm sure the internet is shadow bands the shit out of me for it. That's it. But oh, maybe that, or maybe I'm just old and not as funny anymore. <laughs> and it's right? just that simple. It's the algorithm. Bro. As much as, yeah, that's what it is. I just can't get the algorithm. It's, not, <laughs> it's algorithm. definitely not you that's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no, there's some secret cabal controlling that. that is, damn, we're not winning. The that. internet's a weird place to live. It is a weird fucking place. But I've had a lot of fun, met a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to do a lot of cool things just because I make videos. You've had. Yeah, like did did I'm crazy blessed that the way like pe- some people are so cool, so cool that to me absolutely, dude. Oh my god, yeah. Well, you're one of the raddest dudes ever, you know. So not really think I'd say that, but like uh, I'm okay. All right. Well, I think you're a real straight shooter. That's, that's <laughs> you're a real I straight shooter. <laughs> I like that hat. I though. love that too. Where that hat? Beaut up top, man. Montana till I die. Shout them out. Shout them out. That's tight. I like that. Um, all right. So we've gone through. Breakups, fitness. Oh, other video stuff. Caesar reviews. How did that come into play? How many have you done so far? What's the best? Oh, one? I don't know how many I've done. I've no Probably idea. Lot, I've seen quite a few. I don't know where. So you know El Presidente, obviously, right? Mm-hmm. Like you watch all this stuff from uh, Marshall Sports. Yeah, yeah. And I just watch him do the one bite. Everybody knows the rules. Pizza. Yeah. So like, I don't want to copy that, but like, I thought the concept to myself, like, what better of a job in the world than to go across the nation? Try and eat the best pizza they have. Yeah. Like if I could take, like I love my job, but if I could take anyone's job in the world, I would have Guy Fieri's job when diners, drive-ins, and dives. I I drive the whole nation in a convertible 66, 67 to sixty nine Camaro, and I would eat the best food the nation has to offer. That would be the coolest job in the world. That would be- could see all sorts of stuff and literally just eat the best food. So, anyways, I'm thinking to myself, I was like, what do I like? I, I can't have one. Yeah, I can't eat pizza. Yeah. I can't. I, I almost did it with Rubens one time because I fucking like a good Ruben. That is, that is true. Rubens are like a, like a good Ruben. Good. You, you, did, you know, and then we were, I was going to do it and then 
It's just too too much of a cut, like a knockoff of him. Yeah. So they're both foods. Yeah. But I, I'd already started doing Caesar reviews at that point. Um, but I love Caesars. I I love them. I've never had a Caesar till I lived in Montana, which is I just had Bloody Marys everywhere else. They're a big thing here, and I love them. They're delicious. Oh, so a Caesar, just in case anybody's curious, is basically a Bloody Mary, but instead of tomato juice, you're using clamato juice. And if someone says, "What's clamato juice?" It's tomato juice. And clam juice together, which sounds disgusting. And you either find it absolutely disgusting or you love it. There's no in between. I think I've met two people in my life that are like, mm, they're okay. Yeah, every now and then. No, like you either love them or you hate them. Like you drink them like we're like, that's a drink for you or you will not touch them. I can take one sip and just to tell someone, yeah, spicy, nice. Like that's it. That's all I got. But um, so you've done a bunch of those. Uh, are those like, the leading thing that you got going on? No, I haven't even done one in really? months. I can tell you how long ago the last one I did was. Jeez. Well, that's good. That means you're like doing life stuff. Yeah. Since I've gotten married too, that's another thing. If I'm going to be very frank with you, RJ, yes. um, I have, I've lost Caesar review I did was on May 14th. Oh, hey. Yeah. Um, if I'm being very honest with you, uh, my social media presence, I haven't logged into my Nikki T Snapchat for so long because I just don't really need to. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not chasing pussy anymore. Like, I'm married and I'm happily married. So, like, I, part of me went in there just to pick up hoes, if I'm, if I'm being real honest with you. So, I have no real... And I should keep up with some of those guys who've been following me for a long time and just, you know, see how they're all doing. Yeah. But I just... I also, I'm older now and I just... Most days, I don't really give a shit. And if I have an idea, it's usually right in the middle of the day when like my, my tr- thought process is ready for it, but I've got to finish the work day out before I can take an hour minimum to do that video right. and then edit it to get it uploaded and everything else. And you just can't do that when you're working. Thought so. of the day is a thing you do, right? I used to. I mean, I did a, I did a couple of them not too long ago, but um, that's what started was the thought of the day. Has, uh, have you had any like impact out of those? Like I've like read some comments before and people are just like, oh yeah, for sure. I, I get that. But like you, have you had stuff on a deeper level that's connected with people? Because what I'm doing with the podcast right now, I've been able to reach a lot of people and talk to me and they message me like, Hey, what you're doing is really helping me this and this and this. Uh, I'm going through this in my life. I can relate. Is there any like um, positive things coming out of it like that? Um, I've done a few videos. Um, I had a few people tell me, uh, I made a couple of videos that have kept them from committing suicide, but she was pretty powerful for me. Absolutely. Um, one chick I tried to chase down to hit on afterwards cause I'm a dirt ball like that. That's also, it's also been like at least <laughs> seven, eight years since then, but no, nonetheless, that was a dirt bag thing to do. I had, I did a video, I showed it to you. You remember I was, I was in a real bad spot when I first moved in with you mm-hmm. and you were the first person to see it actually before I posted it. Which one? Um, I was sitting in my truck and talking about how you needed to love yourself. Oh, yeah. Do you remember? I, yeah. I, I looked at it and I said, RJ, I need your honest opinion yeah, on this video. I need you to tell me if this sounds like I'm being a crybaby bedwetter or if I should post it. And you're just like, no, you should really post that. And I did. And it, um, I had a guy, his name's Nash Foreman. Uh, he watched that. And uh, he was telling me about where his life was at the time and how he was going through a lot of serious stuff. He said he watched that video I don't know how many times. And it was basically this video that kind of helped him move along and how I basically saved his life yeah. from that one video. Yeah. And I've heard a lot of people say this video really, really saved me. This video may have saved me. And I've heard like there's comments on it. I've gotten messages from it, which is crazy powerful to me that, you know, you can just go out and I'll jump in my pickup and make a video and it's powerful enough to change somebody's life, which is cool. But the original way, thing I started for is just to make laughs, like yeah, just get a laugh out of it. Too. If I would have pursued it harder and not listened to other people, I might have a different outcome yeah. at this point in my life. But yeah, but you like, you know, don't focus too much on that stuff. Get a real job. You know, so, and, and at one time it had the momentum to really be something if I would have stuck with it. Um, not that my life now isn't, uh, you realize it. when I tell you, um, I may be fat, but I'm happy. You know what I mean? Like, I my wife is the most amazing human being. Uh, what the hell that woman has seen in me and how she, she gets me. She lets me do as I please. I don't have to hide things from her. Like, and uh, I talk to my bit of a sleaze bag, and we'll be walking out, and I was like, we'll be out, you know, on the town or doing something. Like, hey, girl's hot as fuck. Yeah. And she'd look at me and go, 
what? <laughs> like, really? Like, you think so? Uh-uh, not me. And just doesn't get mad, doesn't yeah. normally get yeah. crazy about it. Unless, no, you know, I push it. it, unless I push it too much that she's like, okay, like, I get it. Hump the brakes. But uh, my wife is the most amazing human being in my world. If you met my wife, you, you'll you attest to that. I was The right. best thing that's ever happened to me. When you met her, or when you guys started hanging out, that we were roommates, weren't we? We were. Yeah. Uh, we were there. Yeah, she came over. You guys, like, had a date or, like, she stayed or I don't know. But I met her then, and I remember... Because we had had a revolving door going through our place of just whatever, um, and that was friends the- and hoes and, <laughs> yeah. and dogs, and lots of dogs, lots of <laughs> dogs. Oh, no, no, dude, co- no, co dog, yeah, co dog, R.I.P. Co dog. Um, he bit the mailman. Is that what he did? <laughs> <laughs> he bit the. He bit a couple cops. Bit a couple cops. Even worse. Yeah, that's. Jeez. Uh, and he was a black dog too. Oh, can't we dog. have a can't we have a dogs biting? <laughs> can't be. Uh, but before I went off that topic, uh, yeah, so. We were in this, like I said, that place. And then to go from there, you're like, dude, I really like her, this and this. And I was like, yeah. Everybody thought it was like right away, right? Because it was. It was crazy. It was. Right? No, it was stupid. Mm-hmm. It was crazy, but it was, um, she was in a point where she ended her relationship and she was done with it. And I was living with RJ and she has the house we're in right now. Like she had this place, but it was not in the condition it was in now. It was, uh, it needed a bunch of work and she was over it. Her ex left some unfinished projects, um, some stuff. And it was a lot, like it was a lot that needed to get taken care of. But, and she was ready to sell the house. And she's like, well, I'm just going to come stay with you and RJ. I was was like, you can't. (laughs) I was like, if you didn't have the dogs, then maybe, and you could talk about it. But I was like, you have a place. Let's, I said it was good either way. Let's see what happens. Anyways, we ended up, I made a call, it talking to RJ and it sucked because I was like, dude, I, it's, it's the end of an era. Yeah. It, I'm going to move out. And it was quick though. Super quick. It was like August 1. I moved in there August 1. I first started seeing her like June 1. Yeah. It was like, what, two months? It was like, yeah. Yeah, literally. Yeah. And that's what everybody said. They're like, hey, truly, is he happy? Is he, was he this and this and this? I'm curious, right there about, I'm curious about that. Like, oh. I, I was, I, it's crazy to me that I haven't heard a lot of like, wow, like, think you did that quick enough? Or wow, they're sure jumping in or nothing. No, I got no negative comments from people. Like none. That's good. That's good. Um, and I think people could see it. I think people could see it was, it was the real deal. Absolutely. Yeah. No, when people would ask me like, hey, is that for real? Is this just like, I've never seen him more happy in my entire life. Like, that's literally what I said. I was like, I've never seen him so happy. And they're like, hey, you think it's soon as a quick? I was like, if he's as happy as that, that's the happiest I've ever seen him. I don't fucking care how long, dude. Go, peace, go. That's the whole point. Like, fine. If you found that, which you have, obviously, you guys are married. You got the woman of your dreams. It all worked out, dude. You're killing it. That's crazy to me, though. It's such a weird concept. She's been the biggest blessing in my life. Like, and I'm, I'm a very blessed person, and she's the biggest blessing. Never met a better human than my wife. She's so amazing. She's absolutely, she's dope. You guys balance each other so well. I love her. Yeah, my wife's super quiet, like fly on the wall. Like we'd be sitting here doing this podcast and she'd just be chilling out like right here. If she was in it, like she'd be sitting there and I think she would have said like three words all together. She was just fine sitting there. It's perfect. Will you grab me another seltzer by chance, sir? sir. uh, You want a claw? You want a Cayman Jack? Whatever's right there. Just grab whatever's right there. All right. Not that one. Grab me another one. That's extra. So don't grab the Cayman Jack. Don't. Perfect. Thank yes, you. Sir. Um, I love this fridge. By the way, that is my uncle's from the '60s Westinghouse. That is so. You know, it's hung with underglow. Yeah, I put that on there. Oh, it's, it came. It was an extra. It was an extra in Fast and the Furious Three. It was in Tokyo Drift. Tokyo Drift. Yeah, there was a guy that kind of towed it behind his car. It was like, oh, why not? That's awesome. Know. Do you remember um, Pin My Ride, that, that fucking show? <laughs> Yo, dog. Yo, dog. I just shared something on that the other day. Did you see it? Is it the thing where they were putting, like, TV screens in, in the, the mud flaps? flaps? Yeah, like, what? Did you see my comment on that? No, I was right. like... It's like the world was a better place when Pit My Rod was putting TVs in mud slaps. And my, my convo was, yo, dog, I know you had a, a fish when you were in third grade. So we went and took your Ford Tempest and put a whole aquarium in the back seat, dog. Oh, man. They put like 15 15s in like a geometric yeah. for like for no reason. But all of my, I think so many of those cars got clapped as soon as they left. Because the people who owned them didn't know how to drive anyways. Sold those motherfuckers. Um, uh, this was on the list too. So. Uh, your dad, he uh, he's involved in cars and racing and stuff. Uh, you are you're very much involved in all that stuff. How does uh, 
how does cars, muscle cars and all that stuff, how does that factor in your life? Um, how much does that mean to you? You know, you go to a lot of car shows, you sh stuff like that. Um, when did that all get started? That so the, from the time I was born. Yeah, I've been doing that since the time I was born. That is my thing. Right. Cars make me happy. I it's part of the reason I buy all those trucks. I I buy a new pickup all the time because for one, I'm never happy per se. And you know the vehicle. I always you're always looking for the better thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I won't now because the next truck I want's eighty grand at Ooh. least and. I just refuse to pay that kind of money, but um, Amy G. I just love having that. I love being the center of attention. I don't know if you knew that or not. So I, don't know. I don't know. No, that's me. But I just, I always loved the cars. I've always loved going to car shows, um, seeing new places, meeting new people, talking to people about your cars, and racing was fun. I did that a lot in high school. Yeah, I don't really do a lot of it anymore. But what's your dad's project? Because he has like badass cars, doesn't he? Like, yeah, race, race, race. Well, yeah, that's my car. The race cars. Is it? Car. Yeah, yours? That's my car. The rest of them are all his. I like to pretend they're mine, but they're actually his. Except for the except for the race car. The race car is mine. You should take me for a spin something. You say when, man. <laughs> you come out to the races in Helena. Here. Helena? I'm down for that. Um, so I've learned a lot. Um, what do you got for me, bro? Uh the whole point of this is to just put things out there that need to be said. Um, do you have any other stories for us? Do you have anything else you want to mention? Um Yeah. Anything like that? I uh, want to mention all my homies in county and cell block six. <laughs> cell block six. All right. um, oh, I had one last thing. Yeah, so it's super important. Actually, you do what you're doing. I got to find this because I had something special for you. He's got something special got for something me. And then I got a couple questions for you. Yes, sir. I've asked you about this a few times before, but never. I mean, you've sort of told me. Um, you've traveled and lived all over the place. Yes, sir. Um, mm hmm that's what led you here. One of the guys you worked in the patch with. Mm -hmm. I think he may have met him before. His name's Matt, but he, uh, we met out there and, um, came to check it out here one time. And this was the place. Like my, my heart had never felt more full in a place. I've never truly felt at home in California, but I was very happy that I grew up there because it was just a melting pot of culture. All I did was meet with every different type of race, every language being spoken. And um, so, I don't know, I grew up like that. And I traveled a lot as a kid. I spent every summer of my life in Portugal until I was like 13. So kind of all I knew was traveling. You know, me and my dad, we drive from California to New York together every year because he grew up living in New York, New Jersey area. Um, so, yeah, that equated into when I got out, I'm just going to keep going and traveling by myself. And I've made friends all over every state you can think of. I've lived in states for six months here, a year there, a year here, a year there. And um, since I came here in 2016, this place has been home ever since. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know even since you were here, you went back to California for a while and you were in Washington, we were Washington for a while. Washington. And then you were back here. Texas. Oh, that's right. You went to Austin, didn't you? Austin. And yeah. then you were back here. Yeah. And then this is actually the longest stretch that I've been on uh, since being in Montana, leaving back and forth. It's been three years since I've been in that, almost been in that trailer. But I left to North Dakota for like six or eight months or something. Um, but yeah, dude, Montana's home. Now has been. I want to I wanna put my roots down here. Right. Um, I want to travel around, but have this. I know you got base. some plans coming up, too. I do. Um, I'm moving here in two weeks, give or take. From um, this time that we're filming. Yes. I'll be out by like the first. I'm about to say, by the time you this airs, it'll probably already be <laughs> by gone. The time that you, yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. If you're reading this, I'm already gone. I'm already gone. Um, I'm just going to like do podcasts with boom, 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 a couple of people, do that pack and just hit the road. And, and um, yeah, I'll be living in Billings and like a little bit in Bozeman back and forth and just spreading the podcast, just doing interviews here and there, uh, marketing, uh, not marketing, uh, networking. Um, I have some events that I'm doing to go set up a booth for the podcast. And, uh, yeah, so just, that's kind of like the next step in this thing is just like taking it to the next level. So yeah. yeah you never know if you don't try. You never know if you don't try. You know, like you said, you wish there's, you know, you didn't listen to a lot of what the people said. Right. And just time. keep on fucking plugging. Exactly. I've got a lot of both of those things. Um, so one of the last things, uh, I want to, what do you, uh, what do you have planned now? Um, what I know wife, home house, everything makes you happy. What other kind of goals do you have right now for you guys? 
You know what, RJ? And I know this, and it's not like I don't have goals. I'd like to start investing a little bit. I'd like to worry about what we're going to do, you know, in our retirement years. Mm -hmm. But other than that, at this moment, I don't need a lot. I need enough to pay my bills, have a little bit of change in my pocket for a cold beer, put fuel in my pickup. And like, honestly, that's really about all I need. I don't need a lot. Um, I know that sounds like ridiculous. I'm on this motivational yeah. uh, group chat thing every morning. Like, you know, be the alpha male. You know, change doesn't come without sacrifice. And, you know, it's something you're right. I totally get that. But I can tell you for free, um, I don't think I'm really willing to lose this time I have to be pushy and hustling something so much yeah. that I don't see my wife yeah. or I'm not home. And I'm just out working all the time to yeah. make money to, to do what, though? Yeah, to do it. I mean, sure, like, cool, like, look at that. I got a new Denali in the parking lot. That's really fucking cool. Like, who the fuck cares? Yeah. Like, that's cool. Don't get me wrong. I'd love a new Denali. That'd be great. But, like, my 03, I drive. Um, It's super clean. It's super affordable. Um, You always had nice trucks. Every, mm-hmm. Yeah. I just, I just, I mean, we have a home that we're in, right? Yeah. Um, You know, my goals would be to... I just continue to grow with my wife yeah. altogether. You know, I'd like to see more money in the bank. Uh, I want to go do more traveling. I'm on a person's flight benefit, so I can fly for cheap, cheap, just about anywhere I want to go. Whoa. Really? Like, yeah, I can fly like to Texas for like 80 bucks. Well, um, you know where you got to go, right? Wherever. Portugal. Yeah. I would love to do it in Portugal. That's just the thing, though. You under, like, I mean, like, I, I, want, I want to see things. I don't need to do all the crazy stuff. I just need to work enough to save up enough money to go on the next little outing we're doing and have a little money for a little bit of a rainy day. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to walk around with no cash, but I'm not going to ruin and spend all my 30s, I guess my last of my younger years, doing stuff to for what? Yeah. I'm in a situation now that's... I'm pretty damn blessed, RJ. I uh, you are blessed. I don't see the need for a whole lot more. That makes I love coming home and sitting on the couch and turning on the Xbox. Wife cooks me supper. Sometimes I help her. We walk the dogs. Fuck yeah. Um, we our neighbors are phenomenal. We. We've got a little side hustle that we do ourselves for basically our play money because y- everybody needs a little side hustle. That's awesome. And damn right. Just couldn't be that, much better, man, to be really honest. Like it. I know that sounds so terrible too. It does. No, it does because everybody, you know, you need to have goals and aspirations. No. And and everybody says, like, oh, I'd love a giant house. Like you see how big the, like the two, we're not having kids. This I don't is think. somebody's goal. Somewhere. I don't think we're having kids. You know what I mean? So yeah. this home is more than enough for us. That's true. Yeah. That was going to be my last question. It's manageable. Um, I have this liquor hole that I built for friends and family to come down and enjoy and spend time together. Um, if you want to drink beers with us, great. If you don't, drink a Capri Sun. Damn. And uh, I just, I love that we have the patio outside for the summertime. I love it out here. Yeah, thank you so much for always having me over for breakfast and dinner. You're always stuff. welcome here, RJ. Yeah. Like he always told me your family, you're always welcome. I really appreciate that. Um, so with all that being said, do you have anyone else you want to shout out or anything? Um, I just finished a podcast earlier with Libby, um, a friend of ours, and we spoke about our other friend who um, passed, Haley. So um, shouts out to the Crosses, the whole family over there. Um, appreciate you guys. And um I appreciate you. Thank you so much for thank you for thinking of me um, to be on your podcast. It's a big, big honor for me that you you know think about me to go on your podcast. And I'd like to shout out uh, my wife, and I'd like to shout out anyone who took the time to listen to this podcast with me. I think that's pretty cool that you spend the time to listen to me talk for this however long we've been sitting here. This is the last part. I swear to Christ, there's no more after this. On YouTube, dude, I sent it to you right now. Some, uh, I got, a, I made a video for you. Your friends made a video for you on YouTube. Yes, sir. I sent it to you via. Uh, um, I sent a text message. My friends made a video with me. Yep, your friends made a video for you. Why? Because am I, I supposed to watch this now? Yeah, watch it. Can I wait? Yeah, I mean, if you want, I was just gonna cut it and then. 
Yeah, I'm gonna watch it here and then I'm not ready to watch it. Yeah. I'm not ready for that, actually. I don't know why they do that. That's cool. Well, I told them... I'm not ready to do that right now. <laughs> I told them that uh, I was moving, and it was a big deal that I came and talked to you because you're one of my dear friends, and I thought it would be a nice thing to do if I got a couple of people to uh, say a little something about you because... You've been like really, my obituary. <laughs> your obituary. Because uh, you've been such a great friend to me and a lot of other people. And uh, they're just saying a little bit about you, how much they appreciate you. So. I, I, I'm going to watch it as soon as we're done here. It's, I'll probably watch it with my wife as soon as you we're all clean. Yeah, so it's on the YouTube. I just have it right here. And uh, Swampy talks really low because he put his phone like 25 feet away like a silly <laughs> goose. So crank it up when he does that. But. There's a lot in there. It's it's really nice stuff. So once again, dude, Nick, thank you so much. I love you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you for thinking. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I know. We'll hug it out. Um, yeah, thank you, dude. Of course. Thank you so much for doing this. You're the man. Oh, love you. Love you. Love you. And we did it. We're good.